Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this public meeting of council to order. Is there any disclosure or pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? Approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion, please? Moved by Councillor Reeby, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Okay. This meeting has been called to consider the application under the City of Pembroke Zoning Bylaw 2020-05 to rezone the properties municipally known as 155, 161, 163, and 167 Pembroke Street West from a central commercial C3 zone to a central commercial 10 C3 10 zone to allow use as a student residence. Clerk, please report on how the notice was given. Notice was given by mail to all owners of property within a 120 meter radius of the subject land and was posted on site on November 13th, 2020. Thank you. Mrs. Osorio, could you give us your report, please? Sure. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment would change the zoning of the land, municipally known as 155 to 167 Pembroke Street West, from a central commercial zone to a central commercial dash 10 zone. So the applicant is proposing to rezone the property to allow a student resident with 18 beds along with all other C3 uses at this location. The city's official plan designates the property as central commercial and the official plan states that the central commercial area or essentially the downtown will be developed or recognized for a mix of residential, commercial and institutional uses. And together they are intended to make for a people oriented, healthy and vibrant community core or downtown. The central commercial designation uh, allows medium and high density residential uses, as well as residential apartments units above the main floor. The official plan also states that it is council's intent in reviewing applications for redevelopment or a change of use that involves a zoning bylaw amendment, such as this application, to have regard for the following factors. To ensure that it's compatible with land uses in the immediate area, to ensure that the adequacy and availability of water, sewer, and utility services are available, to comply with zoning standards, and to approximate the established setback pattern on the street. The application does not propose any addition, only interior works would be done if approved. The building would follow the setback pattern of the street and is located on, on the property line as most of the buildings are in the downtown core. The form of development would be compact, energy efficient, and fully serviced. So based on the information, uh, this proposed application would meet the intent of the official plan. The property is bounded on all sides by existing commercial uses on the main floor and apartment dwellings on the upper floors. So therefore, this would be compatible in the area. Presently, there are four properties that make up this rezoning application. The four properties are owned by two different companies. These two different companies are wholly owned and controlled by the applicant, Mr. Gunter. A requirement for this rezoning would be to consolidate or merge the four properties into one ownership. The applicant has provided a legal undertaking indicated that if the rezoning is approved as, as a condition, the four properties will merge into one ownership. According to the site plan that was provided, the only deficiencies are front yard setback and rear yard setback as the building sits on the front lot line and along the rear lot line. The zoning bylaw requires 0.5 parking spaces per bedroom. Therefore, according to the plan provided, um, 18 bedrooms would require nine or 18 bedrooms would require nine parking spaces. The present property has no parking spaces. The previous second floor use of the four buildings accommodated eight apartment units. And according to the zoning bylaw, this required 10 parking spaces. Again, there was no parking. So the zoning bylaw does state that in a central commercial zone, additional parking shall not be required for the difference between the minimum number of parking spaces the previous use required and what the new use required. Therefore, based on this section of the zoning bylaw, no additional parking spaces are required by this change of use. However, this could become an issue with prospective tenants. The applicant would have to ensure and inform potential residents there is no parking provided or that parking permits could be made available only at the marina parking lot. 
Each building is serviced with municipal water and sanitary sewer. However, according to the operations department, additional servicing may be required. The operations department uh, will require the applicant to provide the city with the existing and proposed uh, servicing drawings. So that's water, sanitary and storm. And these drawings will have to be done by a professional engineer to ensure proper servicing for the 18 bed student residence. The application meets the intent of the provincial policy statement um, because it's providing for a mix of residential uses and it states that uh, development shall be based on densities and a mix of land uses which are appropriate for and efficiently use the infrastructure and public service facilities which are planned or available and avoid the need for unjustified or uneconomical expansion. The applicant is proposing to create an 18 bed student residence where water and sanitary services already exist and are connected to the building. However, new services may have to be provided to ensure proper servicing. So the provincial policy statement also states that planning authorities shall promote densities for new housing, which efficiently use land, resources, infrastructure, and public services and support the use of active transportation. Algonquin College is located very close to the proposed student residence and thereby would promote active transportation. So the planning department is recommending this rezoning um, as it meets the intent of the official plan, the provincial policy statement, and meets the general intent of the zoning bylaw. Has there been any opposition to the application? There has been no opposition to this application. Has there been support for the application? There is support, and the applicant, Mr. Ivan Gunter, is with us here tonight. I will turn it over to him. Thank you. Mr. Gunter, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank Colleen for doing such a good job of my presentation. Hmm. Um, in, in, you asked about support of this, uh, this, this project. Um, I actually went around myself and spoke to some of the uh, building owners and uh, uh, operators over the last several months. And uh, no one had any objection, at least not to my face. And I received it, uh, at least one email of support from, uh, uh, from a neighboring business. So I haven't, uh, hopefully there, there is no pushback. I'd like to share my screen, if I may, and just show you some slides about, I think about 10 minutes worth, um, just some of the uh, information that I think may be useful. I did this same presentation with the, uh, the zoning committee. All right, that's fine. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Just the arrows? Yes. Up, up. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. Just a little little bit of background here very quickly. Uh, my, my companies own uh, a f four buildings in downtown Pembroke, um, right on the corner of Pembroke Street West and Alexander Street. Um, we've... Uh, so, sorry, here. We've been accumulating this uh, footprint for the last uh, about 18 years. I bought my first building from uh, Mrs. Green back in the early uh, early 2000s. Uh, we we have as tenants the uh, Upper Ottawa Valley Chamber of Commerce on Alexander Street. We built new offices there. Um, we have uh, Eva and Wolfgang uh, Stockman, who had been downtown for 30 years, uh, celebrating that last summer. Um, Picket Fence moved from the mall to one of our locations and just recently opened up their new Ottawa Valley Apparel location in that, uh, that same spot. And back in about 2004, I actually started to talk about and think about what to do with the second floor. Uh, I even went so far as having an architect do up some drawings, um, but it was a non-starter at that time there was just no way to access the second floor of my one building from the uh, uh, from the street. Now, because we were kind of stopped there, we went ahead and as the buildings next door came available, we bought that. Uh, that was bought from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ward. 
and we bought the uh, Lasso Live, the bar. And upstairs, you may or may not know it, but when I bought the building, there were two shared apartments with student, uh, student rooms in there. So the actual tenancy of that building, there were five, uh, yes, five students in each of the two apartments, one for uh, male and one for female. Now the, uh, the upstairs tenants, we ended that, that business, if you will, because we didn't feel it met all the, all the guidelines that we wanted. We, however, continued with the bar and redid the front of that. And it has become a very popular spot down there. And I think a, 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 I think a good part of, of downtown. Now the next building, 161 Pembroke Street West, was probably our most difficult acquisition. It was among the worst buildings in downtown. It was structurally unsound. There were no alarms, no electrical, or sorry, electrical below code, plumbing below code, et cetera, et cetera. As a matter of fact, well, the interior was a mess. And as a matter of fact, the structure was unsound because as you can see, the floor joists from upstairs were cracked and there were probably a dozen of those. So we had to fix those, which we did. Now, upstairs, there were two apartments and in those two apartments, there were people who are, shall we say, entrepreneurs. Uh, one of them was uh, arrested for uh, um, fentanyl possession and uh, intent to traffic, I believe. And the other one, well, uh, we, we got rid of him because of non-payment of rent. However, 161 uh, was damaging to downtown. This is a picture of a, f a fence put up, with, uh, put up by the Muse. And the reason it was put up was that the uh, customers for the drug dealers in 161 would come up and across the roofs uh, to buy their, uh, buy their supply. So the Muse quite rightly put up the fence to stop that. Uh, in 2018, uh, because we were uh, pushing hard to clean up that building, uh, the nice folks upstairs uh, left, but before they did that, they set the place on fire. That was a further cost to downtown and the city and ourselves. However, uh, 161 has risen. We've uh, we built, I think, a wonderful space for uh, picket fence, and it is now very much a downtown destination. Our last building was, uh, or is this one, 155, 157, 159 Pembroke Street West. And it had four apartments upstairs. Certainly it, it's, it needs some rehabilitation. Now, if you remember my first building, we couldn't get to the upstairs because there was no access. Um, above the bar, there were bedrooms, but there was no second access. There were no windows in some of the bedrooms. 161 had an unsafe structure and 155, um, the, the fourth building there also has issues with fire exits. There was a, a fire exit, which actually went onto a roof, which you cannot have. So our, our thinking was that each of the buildings have shortcomings, but each of them also have advantages. So the thing to do would be to put them all together. And that's what we want to do. This is a top town view. And we're going to do this project in three phases. Phase one is the light blue over on the right. Phase two is the green in the middle. And phase three is the pink over on the left. Now, upstairs, um, it has been residential for decades and decades. So I don't think it's a major change in use, although it, you know, legally it's a, it, it is a change. Uh, we are not trying to do anything that hasn't been there for many, many years. Now, earlier in the presentation, uh, Ms. Soriel talked about um, drainage and water and, and sewage. Just to give you an idea, um, 163 with the two student apartments had a total of 10 occupants. Um, 161 had uh, two, uh, two apartments, but in reality, anytime I went up there, there were probably a dozen people living there as you might expect. 
and 155 Pembroke Street West had four apartments and assuming two people per apartment. Um, so there were eight there and four and 10. So that was 22 right there. And as Colleen said, sorry, um, as Colleen said, we are proposing um, 18 uh, student bedrooms. So we're actually going to lower the population. Now location, we're probably, I think, about the third closest to Algonquin College. And that's why we, we are looking at this project. And that's also why I don't think um, having a car for students will be a big issue. We will certainly communicate that to any potential uh, tenants. <clears throat> Phase one, which we'd like to complete this year, 2021, is the light blue over on the right hand side. This will be only nine bedrooms. They will be very nice sizes and there will be a shared kitchen and shared, shared laundry. And that's phase one. Phase two, we'll probably do a year later. That will add another five bedrooms. And you can see here two washrooms, which actually is no more than were up there before in the new apartments. And phase three in a couple of years will be over top of, uh, over top of uh, uh, Ottawa Valley Peril and uh, Wolfgang and Eva's uh, hair salon. And that will add uh, three more washrooms and a total of five more bedrooms. And I believe that adds up to 18. Um, this is also going to add uh, or create one full-time one full-time equivalent job in downtown. That's going to be as a, a building manager and site manager, if you will. Of course, there may also be a spin-off for uh, various part-time jobs too, such as cleaning and, and, and whatnot. Now, onward, our plans are to work on the second floor, of course. And once that is done, then we can work downstairs in the, uh, uh, the old Mike Monsignor photography location and do the interior there and also do a, a storefronts for both of them. The Mike Mosio location has been uh, demolished and gutted inside because we need to have access for services such as plumbing, such as electrical, etc., to get to the upstairs. So doing the upstairs is critical to getting to work on the bottom floor as well. And in the Mike Mosio location, uh, we've actually had expressions of interest on uh, for food service for a restaurant and that is the wild card if you will as far as uh, sewage uh, load goes we're um, i don't know do i have it here yes i do um i did a little uh, uh investigating the other night and uh what what i seem to have here in the buildings the way they were was a total of 38 fixtures. So that includes sinks and tubs and toilets, et cetera. And looking uh, at the auto, uh, or sorry, the Ontario Building Code, and to the best of my knowledge, we're going to be able to reduce that over, over the buildings down to at most, I think 35 fixtures. And that 35 includes uh, a fair number of uh, fixtures for a possible restaurant. If there is no restaurant, if it turns into a clothing store, for example, there will be a lot fewer, I'm thinking about 19 or 20. So we're actually going to lower the load. We're going to lower the population. We're going to lower the load on the, on the sewage system. And as a matter of fact, the load that we will uh, uh, will uh, create is going to be divided over four buildings uh, instead of just three buildings. <clears throat> uh, lastly, uh, we'd also, and, and this isn't part of this application, but just for information, um, we will also like to uh, um, try to do something with the rooftops as well at some point in the future. We think it's great space. It's sunny, you know, it's great, uh, great exposure for possible things like solar panels, like they did on Leward School um, in the uh, east end of Pembroke. So where are we? Um, we're not really asking for a major change in building use. It's still residential, just a slightly different kind of residential 
The street level certainly remains commercial. Um, this is going to allow us to extend the useful life of the buildings and put more money back into the heritage buildings. The economic success of the buildings, I think, will be uh, uh, certainly enhanced in the, in the future. There will also be new investment. Uh, there will be at least one new business, hopefully going into the Mike Mosion location. And of course, the second floor, as I said, will create some employment itself. And once this is done, this side of at least this one block in downtown will be pretty much done between ourselves and the uh, and the Pembroke Muse. It will pretty much uh, be finished. And I think that's a bit of a landmark. Um, also, uh, working with student residences, the way we can manage it, I think, is a lot tighter uh, and a lot better than uh, it, it would be with regular apartments. We saw in the past with 161 Pembroke Street West, what can happen when there's uh, really no oversight on the buildings. Okay, I apologize for all the, the delay in the sound, but uh, any questions, uh, I, I'll try to answer them. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gunter. Before Council asks questions, Councillor Reedy, as Chair of the Advisory Adjustment Committee, could you comment, please? No sound, Councillor Reedy. When Mr. Gunter brought his uh, presentation along with uh, Mrs. Sorio's report, the committee was very excited. Um, there are currently no student student residences within the downtown core so this is something new and and um will certainly contribute to the vitality that we're experiencing downtown um he's prepared to make a significant investment and um we were certainly um happy to approve the uh or, or to to suggest that this be approved um, for rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Councillor Abdallah. Uh, Mr. Gunter, I, I just want to thank you. I, I watched the uh, planning and zoning meeting online two weeks ago. I'm very impressed by your passion, your commitment, your vision for the downtown Pembroke. And you're obviously uh, uh, aiding to the economic development of Pembroke, especially downtown core and job creation uh, employing local trade suppliers so i just want to personally thank you um, for all you're doing for the community and i wish you the best of success thank you thank you very much thank you councillor lafreniere yeah thank you very much uh, ivan I remember many moons ago, you came and you showed us a plan very similar. Uh, it was in its infancy then, and I've been eagerly waiting to see the next step. Uh, we saw the development along your block, you know, between the lasso and then the, uh, the hairdresser at the corner, like you said. So congratulations. Um, I'm really glad to see that your plan includes retail on the main level again, because we did have a developer come to us several years ago and did not follow through with their plan because they wanted it all to be residential. So I compliment you for uh, keeping our retail level vision in mind and uh, you have my full support on your application. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Pat. Councillor Giacono. Worship uh, members of council and Mr. Gunter, uh, congratulations on your vision and your faith uh, within the city of Pembroke. I think you make us a better community. I know having had two sons that attended school outside of the community, one at Algonquin College in Ottawa, I would have died to have a location to put my son in, such as you're providing. I took them to some dives that. <laughs> I, I wanted to keep them at home, uh, but you're to be congratulated. And I know that uh, the Algonquin College campus at Woodruff has helped to drive economic development in around that area, as this campus is doing here. And I think that uh, the downtown will only become stronger and healthier, but it's not because of us. 
it's because of people like you who have faith and vision in what you're doing. And for that, uh, you know, I'd like to congratulate you and thank you for helping make Pembroke an attraction and a place for students and young people. And people will eventually, hopefully those students will settle here and have businesses here because of people like you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gunter, for the presentation. If anyone wishes to be notified of council's decision, please contact Colleen Sorial at City Hall. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Reavy. All those in favor? We are now adjourned. Thank you. I'd like to call the combined committee meeting of Tuesday, January the 5th, 2021 to order. Uh, you'll, I, the public will notice that we've had to go back because of the restrictions that have been imposed by the public health unit and that the province is shut down. Council is Zooming from home. So we do what we normally do during the summer. We've combined our committee. And so tonight is the committee meeting, but that's the reason for the change. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? None. Could I have the approval for the meeting agenda? Moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Approval of our minutes of the Planning and Development Committee meeting, which was held on December the 1st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Reby, seconded by Councillor Lafreniere. All those in favor? Carried. The Finance and Administration Committee meeting, which was held on December the 1st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by Councillor Giacono. All those in favor? Carried. Any business arising from the minutes? None. Sign request, Mrs. Sorio. A request has been received from the president of the Pembroke 50 Plus Active Living Center requesting the addition of a facia sign as well as an electronic reader board sign at 42 Renfrew Street. The building is known as Victoria Hall and is owned by the City of Pembroke. To erect the proposed signs, the Pembroke 50 Plus Active Living Center requires city permission since they do not own the building. Secondly, Relief is required from the city's sign bylaw. 42 Ranford Street is zoned institutional, and according to the sign bylaw, it permits only one fascia sign, and that fascia sign already exists. The applicants would like to erect a second and a third fascia sign, and the third fascia sign would be in the form of a reader port sign or a readograph sign. A readograph sign is defined as a sign designed so that any identification and or advertisement affixed there is manually or electronically interchangeable with letters or symbols. In this case, it would be an electronic sign. The proposed readograph sign on the front of Victoria Hall would be 6.33 feet by 2.67 feet. And the second sign uh, would, be a, would be located above the reader, readograph sign and it would be 6.33 feet by 1.25 feet. The two proposed signs would meet the size requirements in the sign bylaw and the proposed signs do not exceed 20% of the area of the wall to which the signs are affixed as required by the sign bylaw. Victoria Hall though is designated as a heritage building under the Ontario Heritage Act. The City of Pembroke designated this building as a heritage building in 1991 
and the city's heritage designation recognizes the importance of this property to the local community, protects the property's cultural heritage value, encourages good stewardship and conservation, and promotes knowledge and understanding of the property. The heritage designation does not require an applicant to restore a building to its original appearance. However, to make changes or additions to the building, it requires council approval. The designation bylaw identifies the heritage attributes of Victoria Hall that are considered important, such as the tall slender windows, the gable roof ends, the Italianate tower, and the rich masonry treatment of the building, which extends to the uh, limestone foundation. Council approval is required for changes that will affect these attributes. Council must determine if the proposed signs will detract from the city from the property's heritage attributes. The cost for the sign permit is approximately $155. So the following approvals are required by the combined committee um, to allow the proposed spacious sign and read of grass sign at 42 Vancouver Street. First, permission it needs to be granted to allow the two fascia signs to be erected on a city building. Secondly, permission needs to be granted to allow additional two fascia signs, one being a read of graph sign on a designated heritage building. And thirdly, uh, permission is required to grant relief to the city sign bylaw to allow three fascia signs on the wall of 42 Renfrew Street. Thank you. Questions and comments? Uh, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll be making a motion to uh, support this request for the changes. As the letter says from uh, Ms. LaHood, the president of the association, it's going to improve communication, improve the overall look of the building, and especially with COVID, and keep them in touch with the community for communication. Um, so I make a motion that uh, we approve the request made by the Actor Living Kids of Bus Center. Motion moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Reavy. Any other comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, this particular one I struggled with. Uh, while I recognize the good work that the uh, the uh, the fifty plus uh, folks uh, do in our community, it is a historical building. And when I look at the uh, signs, uh, in my mind, they don't exactly fit with the facade of what that particular building is. Um, Having said that, I'm curious uh, whether or not, uh, I guess for a question to Ms. Sorio, whether or not there has ever been any um, uh, any thought into a common uh, sign similar to, I think it's called the Victoria Center down the street where there's a sign that advertises what it is that's in the particular building. Um, because at this particular building, as we know, there are two going, well, there is two tenants now, the grind and the 50 plus uh, center uh, that way it wouldn't be attached to the building. And, and I, and I, I granted, I understand that the, the folks applied for a grant and they have a grant and, and I understand that, but I'm just wondering in terms of taking a step back, whether or not there'd ever been any thought into having a common sign, uh, that, um, fits the bill of what they're looking for in terms of being able to put up different messaging and so forth, but at the same time, isn't right on the building. Mrs. Sorio? Uh, through you, there has been no discussion about a common sign. Um, and in regards to the Victoria Center one, I believe that's a ground sign. And there's not much room in this area for a ground sign. So, um, there was, and then there was no with the grind or with the. Um, okay. Any other comments, Councillor Lafreniere? Council Lafreniere? I couldn't hear Colleen very well. Um, oh. I heard the beginning of her speech, but I couldn't hear it. But before I ask Colleen to repeat part of what she said, I want to say that I struggled with this as Deputy Mayor did. Because it's the Heritage Building, and when I looked at these pictures, I'm thinking, ooh. Uh, I mean, I sat on the Facility Improvement Committee for several years, and I know that we gave grants to people and they had to follow a certain template because there was a certain theme we wanted downtown. Um, I wish that there was more 
heritage and the sign. That's my feeling. I just feel it's not complementing the building at all. Um, if it was some way they could work the city to come up with a sign that maybe matched even where it says Victoria Hall. I mean, even if, even if the main part of the sign said Pembroke 50 plus was done in a heritage manner and then they could have a separate sign, uh, you know, with a, a scroll on it electronically. But I know, as Deputy Mayor said, this club uh, does so much for our, our community at, at large, but I just do not like the aesthetics of it on that heritage building. Colleen, could you repeat what you were saying? Sure. Um, through you, there is no, there was no um, discussion to make it a common sign um, that I'm aware of. And the uh, Victoria Center, I believe, has a ground sign. It's a common sign, but there's no really no space at this location for a ground sign. But taking into account your um, comments, Councillor Lafreniere, um, we could go back to them and ask them um, to come back with another design, um, if that's the wish of the committee, and that the Pembroke uh, 50 plus active living center be in a heritage type of signage and maybe have some kind of frame or something around the electronic or readograph sign um, that would, you know, be more compatible with the building that would, you know, lend itself a little bit to the heritage of the building. Councillor Reedy. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as far as the heritage component, I really understand that. However, a uh, hundred and some years ago, they didn't have electronic messaging. That's the way people are looking now to, to get quick uh, facts on the go. Um, obviously, all around town, you'll see many, many uh, electronic boards up. Um, so, and I'm definitely not in favor of a common sign. I believe there are two distinct tenants in that building and the active, uh, the 50 plus active living center did receive New Horizons funding and um, were they to, well, they wouldn't be able to use that for a common sign, I'm pretty certain. So I, I like the idea of going back to them and just asking, is there some sort of frame that can, fit in maybe better with the old building and uh, take it from there. Councillor Giacono. <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Colleen, for that report. Uh, that really is, you know, a, a stoic heritage building within our community. Uh, the original City Hall was there, from my understanding, years ago, uh, the 1800s. But I, I truly believe that times have changed and, you know, there were no electronic signs as uh, one of the councillors alluded to, and we have to move forward. But I really like the idea of having the electronic sign somehow encased in some sort of a heritage frame or something of that nature. I'm sure, you know, that design could exist. And I'm sure that perhaps the, uh, you know, the seniors uh, may want to go for that because I think it, you have to, uh, move ahead with the times, but also you can still create that look of the heritage facade. It uh, uh, may be complimentary. How you do that, I'm not a designer, but I'm sure there are architects and people out there that uh, that could uh, help us out. Thank you. Councillor Abdallah. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a point of information, bit of information. I'm speaking with the manager of the Active Living Plus Center, she said that uh, some the clients of the grind are, are coming to their door and asking if this is the grind building um, area. So it's very important that they have a distinctive sign, as Councilor uh, Reby was referring to also, so we separate the two entities. Um, but I would support uh, ending the motion. You know, we approve the request on the condition that they come back with a second uh, heritage-like design. I think that's only fair. Councillor Reeby, are you okay with that as seconder? Yes, I am. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, we have the amended motion on the floor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Diversity Advisory Committee.
Mrs. Salavera. Thank you. So enclosed in uh, the packages is a draft terms of reference for the diversity advisory committee. Uh, this terms of reference was developed by staff in consultation with uh, members of the mayor's diversity roundtable, and that was done through a virtual meeting and over email. So the draft terms of reference outlines a committee that's made up of six citizen appointments, one representative from the Algonquins of Pequaknagon, one representative from the local immigration partnership, and up to two members of council, one of which is a member of the Pembroke Police Services Board. There also includes four resource appointments from uh, the Renfrew County District School Board, the Catholic District School Board, uh, ACFO Champlain, and Algonquin College Pembroke Campus. Uh, so individuals who self-identify as a visible minority and or a member of the LGBTQ2 plus community are strongly encouraged to apply to the committee under the terms of reference. And also included in the terms of reference is that organizations who have been granted a resource appointments are encouraged to nominate people within the organization that either identify as a visible minority are a member of the LGBTQ2 plus community and or have intercultural competency training. Should this draft terms of reference be approved, the city can solicit applications from those interested in becoming a member of the committee in the coming month with uh, nominations coming forward. Two comments. Motion, Councillor Reeby. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Um, Heather, for, for that, it's getting that committee up and running. I'm really glad to see this come forward. I, and it's another sign of Pembroke uh, changing and growing with the times and creating a more welcome community. Thank you. We do need a motion in regards to this committee, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Your Worship, I was just going to say that I would move that we uh, proceed with the Diversity Advisory Committee using the terms of reference that have been circulated to all of us. Thank you. A seconder, Councillor Abdallah. All those in favor? Carry unanimously. Before I move on, I, I want to thank Heather for all the work she did. She. Uh, did a tremendous amount, and it was difficult at the very beginning uh, getting the roundtable organized and following through, and she did an excellent job with it. And uh, we can see by the terms of reference here that it is going to be in a very important uh, uh, committee uh, for the city. So, Heather, thank you very much for everything that you've done in regards to this particular um, developing the terms of reference. Thank you. The Engineering, Design, and Contract Administration, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. The Operations Department recommends the following. Committee approve award for Engineering, Design, and Contract Administration Services for the Forced Road Storm Sewer Reconstruction, RFP number P-20-10, to McIntosh Perry Consulting Engineers Limited in the amount of $58,314. Committee approve additional expenditures in the amount of $5,800 for a contingency allowance, the total value of the recommendations equals $64,114 plus applicable HST. The Operations Department publicly advertised the RFP, which closed on December 8th, 2020, with two proposals being received. Evaluated by the Supervisor of Capital Works, as well as the review and compiling of the scoring to recommend a proponent were reviewed and evaluated in accordance with the predetermined criteria which is reported in the uh, or excuse me listed in the report based on the review the evaluation committee believes the mcintosh perry consulting engineers limited proposal offers the best value for the project subcontractors that were identified in the proposals was gemtech consulting engineers as part of the 2020 capital budget a budget of fifty thousand dollars was identified for the design when the necessary contingency allowance is added to the design cost as well as net HST, the total value is $65,242.41. The 
and that represents a budget shortfall of $15,242.41. The shortfall could be funded from the sanitary sewer presently has also contains some sanitary sewer work. The above includes the future award of contract administration services to Bakatosh Perry Consulting Engineers Limited based on the quoted values submitted in the proposal. 2020 capital budget for council consideration for award after the design and tendering are complete. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Council, comments? Councillor Plummer. I would move that we approve the recommendation of the staff to award the contract to McIntosh Perry, the amount of $64,114 plus applicable HST. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Abdallah. Any other comments? Council Lafreniere? That motion uh, will include the shortfall coming out of the um, Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Fund, I assume. Mr. Lewis? Yes, that's correct, Your Worship. Any other comments? Okay, we have the motion on the floor. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Your Worship. Uh, staff requires direction regarding the possible extension of free parking at meters in downtown Pembroke associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, should committee wish to extend the previous parking meter pilot, an indication of the length of extension and any other conditions is required. Uh, July 14, 2020, direct the PBIA has recently submitted the attached uh, letter, which is in your package, in support due to COVID-19 impacts on local businesses. Regarding financial implications, as a result of the earlier 2020 decision, an unbudgeted reduction was experienced resulting in a revenue deficit. At the direction of committee, parking meter revenue one, including the period parking on adjusting the 20 Start funding received from the province be used to offset the proposed revenue loss should committee direct an extension to the pilot to the treasurer and she has indicated that based on the cost of COVID October 2020 forecast and the draft 2021 budget the safe restart funding received is already for result in a temporary change surplus carry forward to 2020 could be used and I can advise that that amount currently is $453,465.26. If this is to be a permanent change then this would represent a potential levy increase of 0.24 percent based on the already included budget numbers and it may also impact potential uh, parking ticket revenues. Thank you. Uh, comments? This request came out of the in November and uh, received a letter a few weeks ago uh, that was addressed to the mayor and the council. Um, this is a much needed request, especially with COVID. Shop local, we're in a lockdown. We need to support local business as much as we can, uh, the downtown core. I'm not going to get into long-term debate tonight on um, my views. On, we all know where I stand on parking meters downtown, but many people got and just going on the 
surplus, surplus in the 2021 budget make up the lost revenue? Uh, Council Jack, no. I would I would second the motion, uh, Your Worship. Oh, thank you. Uh, comments, Council Lafreniere. I fully support this as well. Um, and it was actually something maybe an oversight on my behalf. If I would realize it was ending, I probably may have brought this up earlier in December, so we wouldn't have had this lapse in the free parking. I'm sure it was an oversight on all of this. So um, I'll be supporting this. Um, we are in hard times. The community has done a great job of supporting local. So I would hate to hinder that in any way, give them any reason to say, you know, that's enough. I've supported them and they can't give us a free parking spot. So I'm glad this is coming forward. Any other comments, Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I don't support the uh, motion that's been presented. As we know, in the first six months, there was to be a pilot project to encourage people to go and shop downtown and, uh, and encourage economic activity downtown. And we were going to study what the results was. And unfortunately, in March, uh, in our particular area, we were faced with COVID budgeted for. And uh, so it was left at uh, staff speed to try and figure out how they were going to come up with the, uh, the shortfall. Now, uh, as of January 1st, we have paid parking. The city of Pembroke through Facebook and other means has been advertising to the public uh, that they need to pay for parking. Uh, it is my hope and my expectation that staff has been replacing batteries because certainly I pointed out to city staff that there's a number of parking meters uh, that uh, were flashing because not because they were looking for money, but because the batteries were uh, were dying and certainly no one had been looking at the parking meters seemingly for a year because of the, uh, the particular program. I find it interesting. I always find it interesting to read different comments on uh, Facebook. One of the comments is that City Hall simply wants to get rich from the parking meters, which uh, I find just the strangest comment in the world. But in any event, Parking revenue, as we all know, assists in offsetting bylaw enforcement costs. We all need bylaw enforcement to ensure orderly parking. Otherwise, you have individuals parking in areas for extended periods of time when they're not supposed to be there. We have individuals on Everett Street parking on the pedestrian walkway, even though there's signs saying don't park there. We have individuals parking outside of Meridian, even though there's not even a parking spot there. We have people parking outside of CIBC parking lot, even though there's not even a parking spot there. And so certainly we need bylaw enforcement. I don't hear anyone saying that they don't want bylaw enforcement. In fact, I hear that the town of Petawawa is now moving forward with bylaw enforcement uh, in their own uh, way, in their own manner. Um, so I understand that uh, um, COVID uh, funds are, are accounted for. This is what uh, was previously indicated to being that particular grant. And I understand that there's this anticipated 2019 accumulated surplus that normally goes to the general capital reserve, a reserve that's heavily utilized to continue the great capital work that has been done for a number of years now. Um, as I said before, I understand the committee was extending the six month program up until December 2020. Uh, they waived the parking, uh, knowing that the waiving the parking fees. Uh, staff have now prepared a uh, budget um, that we're going to be looking at in less than two weeks. Um, and so to ask them at this point in time, okay, go back to the drawing board, change it, uh, take away not only the parking meter revenue, but the ticket revenue and somehow replace that or find a way to do it. So in, in, in all, uh, as and I've had conversations, I will admit that I've had conversations with, uh, with Councillor Abdallah in terms of a true pilot project uninterrupted by COVID or other means to try and uh, analyze some data and figure out whether or not parking meters uh, does make a difference to, in terms of economic activity in downtown. Frankly, for myself, it doesn't make a difference either way in terms of going downtown or not. I pay the lovely 25 cents and, and go about doing my shopping. So, uh, but I'm anxious to see what the results would be, but that certainly isn't this uh, past year and it certainly isn't going to be I don't believe this year, I, I fully anticipate, and I've said before that I expect that we're gonna have a COVID situation until the fall of 2021, when uh, at least according to CTV News, um, hopefully there's a, a cross at some point where there's 
uh, warmer weather, people getting uh, getting their vaccines, and hopefully there's a reduction in the number of COVID cases. So hopefully by the end of 2021, we might have a more normal situation that might allow us to properly study it. Uh, but in any event, a uh, long-winded way of saying I don't support the motion. I'd like uh, to make a comment before going back to Council. The, uh, I'm in favour of this basically because of, of COVID-19. And for the six months, uh, I know it's only 25 cents uh, you put in the meter. for, uh, but, but I think it's important because the bottom line, all the businesses are really suffering at, at this uh, time. And we are trying to encourage people over and over again uh, to go downtown. And I think our community is doing it. So I, I think for this period of time with COVID, I'm in favour of extending it. And I understand fully that it does have financial implications. Uh, Councillor Reeby. Thank you, Worship. I tend to agree with the Deputy Mayor. Um, I've never seen so many people downtown as I have in the past year. Is it because they don't have to spend a quarter for parking? I rather doubt that. We don't have that many parking spaces available at the meters to begin with. The majority of people park in the lots where they get free two-hour parking. Um, I'm certainly not a fan of going into budget deliberations, looking at a levy increase right off the top to uh, to make up for lost parking revenues. So, so I can't support um, extending this pilot project at this point. And again, it's not a true pilot project. Councillor Jackano. Your Worship, uh, members of council, I will have to support the uh, the motion. I, I'm usually, you know, not in favor of losing revenue, but I think uh, these are exceptional circumstances uh, based on COVID and what it has done to not only our community, but communities right across the country. Uh, we see bankruptcies taking place by uh, businesses and small communities such as ourselves. And I think anything we can do at this particular time I mean, if we're going to lose sixty or seventy thousand dollars on parking meters, uh, let's put that into perspective. If you lost twenty businesses in your main downtown core, how many dollars would we be looking for then? So you have to look at that as a balance. I think that we have to support people at this particular time. It's a crucial time. It's a time when uh, you know they're reaching out to us as business people. I know we've been supporting locally as much as we can. But everything we can do at this particular time will ensure that these businesses will continue to operate within the downtown core. And uh, Your Worship, you know, you've done such a great job in council uh, to infuse new life. Mr. Gunter was just here. You know, look at look at what he's done. All the new businesses, we have to support that. And I, I mean, you know, if it becomes a quarter or a nickel and dime that's going to make the difference, then I certainly would like to waive that and have that go into the six month uh, program again. And if needs to be done longer, then I think we'll have to look at that when the time comes place. Uh, but I will be supporting this from the standpoint of that we need to support our downtown businesses at this time. Oh, Councillor Abdallah. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be coming back to council or the PBA will be coming back you know, down the road. Hopefully when COVID's all gone, we do a pilot project. We have no data skewed. I know it's 25 cents, but it's overall perception. You know, come downtown, we have three, two hour parking. We don't know if the revenue is going to be 60,000 loss. It could be 40,000. It could be 50. And as Councillor Jackano says, you know, we need to support and I'll, I'll, I'll take the 25 cent loss or the 60,000. It could be 40,000, we're not sure. But downtown is on a roll, it's very vibrant. What message are we sending the businesses there if we turn this request down for six months? And then we can look at it another six months and see where we're at. But it's very important. It's long-term economic development, but we're just speaking to the motion about COVID. So it's very important we accept this motion and I urge fellow councillors to support it. Thank you, Your Worship. Councillor Lafreniere. Just a final comment. Um, the numbers we're looking at are skewed. We really can't be sure. Um, I know a year ago when we set the budget for the parking revenue, we had no idea that COVID was coming. 
So our forecast was probably high to begin with, thinking we were having a normal year. Um, our losses may not be as high as we thought. And going forward, our revenues may not be as high as we forecast because we don't know how long this is going to last. So I would say let's just take the small loss. It really don't going to be that much. And it says Councillor of Dallas said it's perception. So thank you. Okay, I'm going to call a question. All those in favor, can I? I want to make sure I see your hands, please. All those in favor of the motion. One. Your worship. Oh, okay, a recorded vote, so uh, Mr. LaPierre. Uh, prior to that, if I could, uh, Mr. Yes. Mayor, I'm not certain if, if I've missed it or, or heard it, but is the intention to fund the six-month uh, lost revenue that's currently in the budget from the 2019 accumulated surplus? I believe, was that part of your motion, Councillor Dalla? Yes, that's the intent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so... Call the vote, uh, Deputy Mayor Giacchino. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Deputy Mayor Jerva. Nay. Councillor Plummer. Yay. Councillor Abdalla. Yay. Councillor Reavy. Nay. Councillor Giacchino. Yay. Councillor Fernier. Yay. Mayor LeMay. Yay. So two nays, five yays, the motion passes. Thank you. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Deputy Mayor Gervais, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All those in favor? Okay, we are now adjourned. Thank you.
I'd like to call this council meeting of Tuesday, January the 5th, 2021 to order. I would ask everyone to please bow their heads and to say a prayer silently before we begin our meeting. Thank you. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest in general nature thereof? None. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of our regular council meeting held on December the 15th, 2020? Moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All those in favor? Carried. Adopt the minutes from our committee meeting, the planning and development meeting held on December the 1st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Reavy, seconded by Councillor Jackano. All those in favor? Carried. The Finance and Administration Committee meeting held December the 1st, 2020. Moved by Councillor Plummer, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Carried. Receiving the minutes from the committees, uh, the Pembroke Public Library, which was held on November the 19th, 2020. Moved by Councillor Giacono, seconded by Councillor Reavy. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, committee report, combined committee report, request for proposal, uh, Councillor Giacono. Councillor Giacono, we need sound. Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Your combined committee of council begs to report and recommend from its meeting held this evening as follows, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Plummer, that request for proposal number P20-10 for the engineering design and contract administration services for the forced road storm sewer reconstruction be awarded to McIntosh Perry Consulting Engineers Limited in the amount of $58,314 plus uh, HST, that the operations department be authorized additional expenditures in the amount of $5,800 for a contingency allowance. The total value of the recommendations equals $64,114,000 plus applicable uh, HST. Awaiting your signature, Your Worship. Moved by Councillor Giacono, seconded by Councillor Plummer. That request for proposal number P-20-10 for engineering design and contract administration services for the Forest Road Storm Sewer Reconstruction be awarded to McIntosh Perry Consulting Engineering Limited in the amount of $58,314 plus HST. That the operations department be authorized additional expenditures in the amount of $5,800 for a contingency allowance. The total value of the recommendation equals $64,114 plus applicable HST. Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Okay, carried. Thank you. Uh, borrowing bylaw, Councillor Plummer. Thank you, Worship. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Giacono, that bylaw 2021 01, a bylaw to provide the current borrowing for the City of Pembroke for the year of 2021 be adopted and passed and further the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed to seal the corporation moved by councillor Plummer, seconded by councillor jackano that bylaw 2021-01 a bylaw to provide for current borrowing for the city of pembroke for the year 2021 be adopted and passed and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation any comments councillor Plummer? Okay, all those in favor? Carried. The rezoning of 155, uh, 169 Pembroke Street West, Councillor Reeby. No, no, you missed the B. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The interim uh, tax levy, Councillor Lafreniere. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gerva, that bylaw 2021-02 a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy for the year 2021 be adopted and passed. 
and further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Lafreniere, seconded by Deputy Mayor Gervais, that bylaw 2021-02, a bylaw to provide for an interim tax levy for the year 2021, be adopted and passed. <laughs> and further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. All those in favor? Carried. The rezoning, Councillor Reavy. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Abdallah that bylaw 2021-03, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 155, 161, 163, and 167 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed. And further that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Reavy, second by Councillor Abdalla, that bylaw 2021-03, a bylaw to authorize the amendment of zoning bylaw 2020-05 regarding 155, 161, 163, and 167 Pembroke Street West be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Okay, all those in favor? Carried. The MTEC transfer payment, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reavy, that bylaw 2021 04, a bylaw to authorize the entering into a transfer payment agreement under the Municipal Transit Enhanced Cleaning between Her Majesty the Queen and the Right of the Province of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Transportation and the Corporation of the City of Pembroke, be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Moved by Deputy Mayor Gervais, seconded by Councillor Reavy. That bylaw 2021-04, a bylaw to authorize the entering into a transfer payment uh, agreement under the Municipal Transit Enhanced Cleaning MTEC between Her Majesty the Queen in right of the province of Ontario, as represented by the Minister of Transportation and the Corporation of City of Pembroke, be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and Clerk and seal of the seal of corporation. Any comments, Deputy Mayor? Uh, Your Worship, uh, in June of this particular year, the Minister of Transportation announced some extra funding uh, to uh, assist with the enhanced cleaning that's been going on in, in uh, transit systems. In the City of Pembroke, we have the benefit of having the Pembroke Handy Bus. I chair the, uh, the Handy Bus and I can indicate that uh, uh, the Handy Bus has been doing a lot of extra cleaning uh, to ensure the safety of all of the uh, uh, the patrons that are using the handy bus. So this will assist in uh, getting some much needed funds to try and offset all of those costs. Thank you. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Mayor's report. The start of 2021 brings with it challenges and new opportunities for Pembroke. 2020 was a busy year and a difficult year due to COVID-19. And I want to thank council and staff for helping our municipality stay the course during uncertain times created by the coronavirus. We are committed to following our strategic plan to provide an affordable, vibrant community which offers a level of services and amenities that support a sustainable and healthy lifestyle. I'd like to briefly comment on our five priorities that provide direction for council. First, infrastructure improvements will continue in 2021. We will continue to lobby the federal and provincial government for stable long-term infrastructure funding support. One disappointment in 2020 was not receiving financial support for the building of a new pool. Council did make the decision in December to go ahead and begin the process of building an aquatic facility that would be smaller in scope, but would serve the needs of our city. Economic development has been a priority for the last six years. COVID-19 has put a lot of stress on this area. Thankfully, we have a CIP program that council was able to use to help struggling small businesses. The CIP, along with other small business grant, allowed us to commit $100,000 to small businesses in 2020. The shutdown we are presently under is an added burden for our businesses. We will continue to, to press the provincial government to provide necessary funding to help our businesses survive during this period. 
With the vaccine now becoming available, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We will make sure that we have all the necessary tools to help us grow businesses and tourism in 2021. Shared services and partner agreements are another priority. We have started negotiations with Laurentian Valley regarding a new water and sewer agreement, and it is our intention to have a new long-term agreement in place before the end of 2021. We also have a shared services agreement with Renfrew County, and we will be requesting meetings with the county to review the agreements to ensure that costs to the city remain equitable. Transportation is a priority that we will continue to move forward. A consulting, firm, a consulting firm will be hired to do a study in regards to public transit opportunities in Pembroke, and Council will be making a decision on transit before the end of 2021. A fifth priority for Council is to complete an active living master plan. Now, COVID-19 has slowed progress with this initiative, and I am hopeful that we'll be able to move the plan forward in 2021. I want to thank the many ratepayers of our community who sit on our various advisory committees. Your recommendations to Council are invaluable. It has been difficult to hold meetings in 2020, but that will improve in 2021. And a reminder to our, our residents that we now have five advisory committees that were set up by Council. Our Economic Development Tourism Advisory Committee, our Seniors Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, Climate Change Advisory Committee, and as of tonight, a Diversity Advisory Committee. Thank you, Council, for your continued hard work. As I've said before, this Council's accomplishment have, been, have not been without debate. The variety of opinions and ideas is healthy and the essence of what we do. I thank Council for respecting each other's viewpoints, for challenging one another, and for making decisions and moving our city forward. There will continue to be bumps and detours ahead, but with the help of community, we will continue moving forward in a positive manner to benefit all of the residents of our city. Thank you, Pembroke City staff, for the work that you do in serving the ratepayers of our community. I know it is sometimes difficult, and COVID-19 added to the stress of getting things done safely. Your work is very much appreciated. At our next Council meeting, members of Council will be reporting on activities that took place within their departments and areas of responsibility in 2020. And I want to thank each Council for their continued commitment in making our city the best place to live, work and play. Finally, COVID-19 cases continue to rise in our area and the province. We are in a shutdown and it is more important than ever to make sure that you've had a flu shot, follow public health guidelines, wear a mask, wash your hands frequently, and maintain physical distancing. The start of 2021 continues to be an extremely challenging time for everyone in our community. And I once again like to thank our frontline workers, our educators, our local business community, and the community as a whole, who continue to do an excellent job adapting their operations and keeping our community safe. So thank you. Any notices of motions? Councillor updates. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, as you're aware, uh, we have been legislated as a council to come up with a community safety and well-being plan. Um, you're also aware that uh, we applied for a grant and we have the uh, fortune of uh, having the services of Mr. Pat Finnegan. Uh, we've been having monthly meetings and continue to have monthly meetings to develop this plan. What I want to bring to Council's attention is that we now have a new deadline. Uh, the Minister, Minister sorry, uh, the Solicitor General has indicated that we have until July 1st, 2021. So we do have a, a, a deadline to work towards. 
Um, prior to that date, uh, not only does a draft plan need to be developed, but it has to come to council for council's review and hopefully adoption, in which case then at that point we have satisfied the first step of what's required of us by this uh, particular ministry. After that, it will be to implement that particular plan. But right now, I just want to bring to council's attention that the deadline initially of December 31st uh, has now been extended to July 1st, 2021, and we do have a deadline. Obviously, uh, the uh, province, uh, although they recognize that there is COVID, uh, knows that the show must go on and so that we must develop this particular plan. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Reedy. Thank you, Your Worship. Just something brief uh, from Renfrew County District Health Unit. The board um, will be having its first meeting of the year this coming Friday. So nothing specifically um, from them. However, at my last uh, report, last council meeting, I did um, speak to having the statistics for the number of cases within Renfrew County broken down. Um, at that point, they'd only been able to take Whitewater Region out of the Pembroke numbers. However, several days after our council meeting, lo and behold, they came up with a total breakdown online for the re uh, reporting of COVID cases so we can get a clear picture of where we as a city stand in comparison to, uh, to the neighboring communities. Um, Yes, our numbers are climbing um, and we hope to keep that at, at bay and um, not getting any higher with this lockdown in effect. So perhaps a, uh, a brighter picture in months to come. We can all hope for that. Thank you. Councillor Giacono. Your Worship, uh, members of council, I just want to make a comment on the uh, the resolution that was uh, put forward by myself and Counter Plumber tonight in regards to the approval of design work with uh, Macintosh and Perry for the Forest Road sewer water main uh, hookup. Uh, as, as indicated, uh, that road takes a lot of traffic. Uh, it is also a shortcut, I believe, uh, for many of our neighbors from Orange and Valley to use as they travel down Boundary Road onto Forest Road and then access uh, you know the main street to go either shopping or uh, going to Petawawa to the workplace etc. Uh, that road takes a tremendous amount of traffic and I know that Mr. Lewis would uh, would be quite happy that this reconstruction as well as the deputy mayor as the chair of operations uh, knows that this reconstruction will take place so as you alluded to your worship uh, you know the constant uh, focus on infrastructure is very important for our community and uh, if you want to get your eyes open, wake up some morning at six o'clock and see the traffic that comes down Forest Road. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Councillor Lafreniere. Um, I just want to, on behalf of the city's Parks and Recreation Department, uh, they've been working very hard to try to ensure that our residents are keeping active during uh, COVID-19. I um, want to encourage everyone to stay active and stay safe. And just to let everyone know that the outdoor rinks are open at Kinsman and Rotary Park from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. Uh, we are following health guidelines. There's a limit of 10 people. And if there's people waiting, then you have 30 minutes on the ice and then you have to let the next people on. There's also a snowshoe lending program that the Recreation Department has come up with. Uh, it's curbside pickup and you can uh, call the Recreation Department and uh, reserve your snowshoes. You'll have them for a week. So stay active and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Abdalla. Thank you, Your Worship. I have one item tonight regarding the Community Watch. The um, January 9th and February 13th information sessions that are being held at uh, Pembroke and Area Community Centre, PEMICE 2, have been tentatively changed to Saturday, February 6th and February 27th. These will be presented by the Local Immigration Partnership on building well, how to build welcoming communities. Um, notices will be sent out uh, advertising these dates and a week before that we will officially confirm that it's a go. Um, if this does not work out, we will do it via Zoom on the internet. It, this, these sessions will also be recorded 
uh, and done live on Zoom also. So we're hoping to uh, that this goes forward uh, physically. The second item about Community Watch is that we want to thank uh, Mr. Steve Halpenny and his wife Sandra. They're spearheading the first establishment in January of the neighborhood around Victoria Center. So we want to commend them for their hard work. Uh, we want to thank the, the uh, Deputy Mayor and the Police Services Board for ordering Community Watch signs and we've ordered some window decals also. So things are moving along despite the challenges. Slowly but surely we will build a welcoming uh, Community Watch program in Pembroke. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. A council and caucus meeting was held earlier to discuss proposed or pending acquisitions or dispositions of land by the municipality and there's nothing to report from that meeting. There were no pecuniary interests declared. The confirming bylaw, Councillor Abdalla. Thank you, Your Worship. Moved by myself, Brian Abdalla, seconded by Councillor Andrew Plummer. The bylaw is 01 2021 to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of Council of January 5th, 2021, be adopted and passed, and further, the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Moved by Councillor Abdallah, seconded by Councillor Plummer, that bylaw 01 2021 to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of Council of January the 5th, 2021, be adopted and passed. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. All those in favor? Carried. Could I have a motion to adjourn, please? Moved by Councillor Reevy, seconded by Councillor Plummer. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.